Flavor family, what is up? I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. It is Friday evening in Chicago. My main man Art is here. We're gonna cook up a fantastic Friday feast for hashtag Fridays with Flav for the second live stream of the week. I mean, we have so much fun hanging out with you guys. We spent all afternoon at Target actually filming a video for deli meats and lunch meat. And then, like we promised you on Wednesday, we scheduled a live stream for Friday night to hang out with y'all because what else are we gonna do, right? We're gonna go to the club, we're gonna go to the happy hour. No, we're gonna hang out with you. Before we get started, before I tell you about this fantastic menu we're gonna make, housekeeping, can you hear me okay? Can you see me okay? And, Art? Can you hear me in addition to Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Art with the announcer voice. We love it. Art's like the new announcer. I love it. Uh, so let us know if you could do all that thing. Um, and then most importantly, let us know where you're watching from. Leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from and what you're making for dinner because tonight is going to be good. We're going like, we're going upscale, right? This is like a lot of work, but hey, it's Friday night. Like the week is done. Time to party and hang out and have a good old time. So here's what's on the menu tonight. And I've actually never made half of it. <laughs> Should be interesting, right? We're gonna make fried fish tacos. Crispy tempura battered cod, deep fried in avocado oil, served with a smoky red cabbage slaw, blister tortillas, my best ever um, golden creamy cauliflower, oh not cauliflower, my golden creamy coconut cashew rice. Nothing's paleo, nothing's keto tonight. And we're doing uh, guacamole. It's gonna be amazing, right? Because Tacos Tuesday, yeah, we all know about that. But what about Tacos 24-7, 365? That's how I roll. And I saw a comment the other day, I'm like, hey, do you ever not cook keto? And yeah, we do it once in a while. So I thought if we're gonna do it, let's go big, right? Tempura battered um, with uh, rice flour. And this, this rice we're making on the side is my best ever rice. It's jasmine rice cooked in coconut milk water, uh, turmeric with cashews and herbs. It is phenomenal, right? That's right, buddy. We got Brooklyn, New York in the house. We got Pennsylvania making spicy grilled pork chops. I love the sound of that, Lynn. We got San Jose, California in the house. Uh, we got Cleveland, Wow, lots of San Diego here. Ah, young Bibby, no pork rind nachos. Now, when it's a pork rind nacho, are you actually using the pork rind as the chip? Because that sounds very interesting to me. I've never yeah, thought about that. Right? Yeah. So pork rind's covered in nacho cheese sauce and like bacon, and that actually sounds really What's good. What's not to like there? What's not to like? Uh, let's see, we got- Alaska. Oh, wow, Alaska's my Yvonne. Um, so great time. This is gonna be a fantastic dinner. It's Friday night, well, right? Pittsburgh, PA, Cubs are there tonight. Oh, that's right. Pittsburgh Germany and Chicago. In the house. Nice, Danke. Woo, we got lots of people here, baby. Jerry Scotland. from Chicago. I love it here. West um, that's right. Once again, everyone say hi to Art. Hello, everybody. Good to um, be here. Art will come on pretty soon. Hopefully, we can get uh, Rose. She's on the patio taking a snooze right now over here, too. But it's Friday. Pour yourself a drink, relax, kick back, and let's get uh, cooking. Let's uh, do it on three. One, two, three. Hey. All right, family, let's do it. Hello, everybody. First thing we ought to do is cook the golden coconut cashew rice. Um, there's a version of this in the cookbook with keto rice, but tonight we ain't doing nothing keto, right? So I'm gonna cook this in a little bit of golden ghee. Gonna drop that in the pot. And we're gonna start with aromatics here. For aromatics, we take a trip, even though it's Friday evening, to school. Culinary School 101. Art, come on in. You guys have seen me do this a million times. This is how we chop an onion. We perch our fingers on top safely and we make planks across the bottom. Try to go as close together as possible and you keep your fingers out of the way. Then we bring the claw, the fingers back and we make sticks. Once again, try to go as close as possible. And then with the last cut, you perch your fingers back again like the claw and all of a sudden, Oh, look how it comes out. It's already a fine dice, right? You don't have to worry about chopping the onion and chasing it around the board. It's all done for you. Wow, that looks really scary from this perspective. Does it really? Yes. But here's the, I can't really cut it's my like, finger now, no, you guys. No, no, it looks like the knife's gonna go into my hand. Oh, let me really see. Oh my God, it does. The tip looks way closer than it is. Just the tip. I guess sometimes it's Shaheen's close. In the house. Shaheen from Dubai. Shaheen's a long time. Flav City fan. Her brother was just in Chicago and she dropped and he dropped off a care package for Rose. That was so nice. So if you're just joining once again, we're making crispy tempura fish tacos with a smoky red cabbage slaw. My best ever 
ultimate rice dish of golden coconut cashew rice and some guacamole. Serve that on some blistered tortillas, as we say in the gringo land. Tortillas. It's going to be delish. So I, de I decided to cook the rice in ghee because it's golden rice, and I figure why not cook it in golden ghee. This is a startup from Venice Beach, California. It's whipped grass-fed ghee with cumin, turmeric, and other spices. It's really, really delicious. Nice company. And I'm going to immediately season that with a little bit of unrefined salt and some pepper. So we'll give that a head start. And then we're going to go in with some garlic and some turmeric. That's what makes this rice good. And just like Goldfinger, I love good. <laughs> that's, really, that's really annoying. Don't do it anymore. All right. Tell them how many times I saw the original Austin Powers in the theaters. My exaggerated number is at least 50,000. Uh, realistically. Realistically, probably 100. No, no, no. Over, uh, over 10, for sure. Yeah. I, me I and my friend, at least 20. Me and my friend Chris were just infatuated with that movie. Uh, so now I'm going to chop a little bit of garlic. And also, that, it's funny because we're using golden ghee. Or right, tell everyone the story about my relationship with fat back in the day. So, if you knew Bobby back in maybe 2003, 2005, somewhere in there, he, he, it was like kryptonite to him. Fat was like kryptonite to Bobby. And the idea of cooking with fat, cooking with butter, oh man, he was just like, oh no, no way, man, that's too much fat. <laughs> like French style cooking, lots of butter. He's like, oh no, 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 no more fat. And uh, that's not the case anymore. You no, I vividly remember when I was in high school. So the day I turned 16 and got my license, I started working at the gym and I was a fanatic. And I was afraid of fat back then because I hadn't seen the light. I didn't know, right? And I remember vividly walking into the kitchen one day. My dad was pouring some olive oil into a pan to cook and I freaked, right? I lost my shh. You know, when I saw him dump maybe two tablespoons of oil, I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? What are you doing? So... Now we all know, and I know, that good fat is really good for you. Um, but it was funny because on Wednesday, we were uh, doing the uh, chicharron-covered uh, pork chops. And Art's like, and we were snacking on the chicharrons beforehand. And Art's like, dude, do you remember back in the day when you were afraid of fat and now you're chomping down chicharrons? And I'm like, wow, I didn't know you remember that. So that was really funny to me. I don't forget much, as my dad often points out. So. Um, all right, guys, if you're just joining, we've got 450 people in here. We're going for a new record. I want to get a thousand people plus on the stream. So you know the shtick, right? Take the link from this live stream, paste it over to Instagram uh, stories. Say, hey, yo, Flav City and Art are hanging out making hashtag Fridays with Flav keto, not keto, uh, fried tempura tacos. Paste it to your Facebook wall. Be like, yo, let's hang out and make some delicious food with Flav City and have a good old time. Keep leaving comments down below, letting us know where you're watching from and what you're making for dinner. We got Texas in the house. Um, are you guys brothers? No, Amanda. He is my brother from another mother. Tiffany's from the greatest city in the world, New York City. Uh, can you post a list of all the companies that you use and their ingredients, please? Kelly, I'm working on right now with Art an ebook that tells you all the ingredients and Bobby approved uh, list items at the grocery store and what to avoid. And it's going to constantly update every time we have a new video. So stay tuned for that. There's a lot of information to go in that. That's right, Amira. Another night with Flav City. South Carolina's here, Houston's here, Argentina, que paso, nice. Um, so now I'm going to go in with four cloves of garlic. Worth going over there or not yet? Yeah, it's not that exciting. But maybe someone can tell me why I gave the onions a little head start there, as opposed to putting the garlic in with the onions. I'm going to guess somebody can tell. I'm pretty sure... Your, your clientele here are quite astute. I'm pretty sure you all know that, right? Then I'm going to rinse my rice. So, like I said, in the cookbook, there's a golden cauliflower rice served with my favorite uh, main dish from the book, the Moroccan chicken stew. This is kind of a riff on that. This is one of my older recipes that I made years ago. And I love it because it's with jasmine rice, which is a very floral rice, and it cooks up so al dente. And I cook it with about half coconut milk, half water, and I put raisins in there, and the raisins hydrate. And then I finish it with unsweetened shredded coconut flakes, herbs, and cashews. It's a flavor bomb. It's a texture bomb. It's so good. And the reason why I'm rinsing the rice right now 
just to get the excess uh, dust away, to clean any impurities off, and uh, that'll help it cook a little more evenly and not, not muddy the water so much. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna set that Shaheen, over here. Shaheen wishes a happy nine years to you and Desi. Thank you, you guys. Yesterday, Desi and I celebrated our nine year wedding anniversary, which was great. We were planning on going out to our favorite restaurant in Chicago, Girl and the Goat, but we were so tired because Rhoda's had a tough night of sleep that I made spaghetti and meatballs. And you know what? Like I said, nothing says I love you like spaghetti and meatballs. Now, Art, come yonder. Okay. This is what's gonna make our rice golden. It is turmeric powder, golden. It's turmeric powder, right? Now I have a question for y'all. Why am I gonna do this, right? Why am I gonna first add my turmeric here? Turn my heat down. Why am I gonna cook it in the fat first like that? Why not just add my rice and add the liquid and then add it? Someone tell me why I'm doing that. And if, you, if we had smell vision you can see, or you'd smell, as soon as this goes in the pan, it becomes super aromatic. And what's the aroma of turmeric? It's peppery. It's very peppery and earthy, and I love it. So I'm gonna cook that. Art, read off some answers when they come in. Oh gosh, we've seen a few folks say, uh, bloom, bloom the spices, roast the flavors, yep. roast the spices, bring out the flavor, added flavor, bloom the spice. That's right. Essential oils. That's and right, Gail's got it, Rhonda's got it, Mohammed's got it, Lena's got it. So we're not just blooming the essential oils to amp up the flavor, but we're getting rid of the raw flavor. Because any spices sometimes have raw flavors that can upset your tummy. So it's a twofer. Think of like spices as dormant. It's like a sleeping dragon in my pantry. But when I put them in the pan, I wake the dragon. And the dragon is flavor. So he's angry, but he's flavorful at the same time. That's so much better than just dumping in, say, the liquid and then sprinkling that into the water. It won't have the same effect. Now I can take my rice and I kind of do the same thing. I put it into the pan and I actually cook it for a minute because that helps set the starch in the middle of the rice and it actually makes it cook evenly. And see what happens all of a sudden. It's like, whoa, man, the 70s are back. Woodstock, Woodstock, right? It's tie-dye rice. And I think, Art, you said it's the anniversary, yeah, right? Woodstock was technically in the 60s, probably. Oh, sorry. I, you know, it's all the acid, man. I, I, I lose tra track of the decades. What, 50 years ago today? Uh, that's what you said earlier. 1969. So, Art, check it out. Here's what's gonna make the rice literally over the top. I'm not just using water, right? I'm using full fat organic coconut milk. This is my favorite brand from Trader Joe's because look at the ingredients. There's no emulsifiers, there's no preservatives, it's just organic coconut meat and water. That is it, right? What's the difference between coconut milk full fat and reduced fat? Water. Reduced fat has more water. Why would I wanna pay for that? Homie, don't play that game. Homie saves money, right? What kind so, of rice are you using? Somebody just I'm using jasmine rice. And for jasmine rice and basmati, it's a one to one and a half ratio. So if I use one cup of rice, it's one and a half cups of liquid. Since I used two cups, it's three cups of liquid. So I often find that, and I'll tell you why my water's down here in a minute. <laughs> I often find that many rice recipes call for too much water and that results in a mushy texture. This amount of liquid will literally just cook the rice through and give it almost like an al dente, a little bite to it. And that is just shy. So we have a reverse osmosis alkaline water system that we got when we were living in Venice Beach. And we brought it back with us and I didn't want to drill a hole in our double thick granite. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just bend over when I need water. Okay, so this is good. Now this is the magic, right? As soon as this goes in, it's gonna dye the color of the water in the milk. And hence we have golden milk, golden rice. Isn't that pretty, right? You serve that to like a crowd, even your kitties. Colorful food is fun and it's fun to play with your food. Now, I art consider this is one of the most important parts of making rice because a lot of people just bring that to a boil and they'll just throw a lid on there and wait. No, 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 we just put three cups of bland, unseasoned water and coconut milk. We season, right? But before we do that, we take rice or currants or apricots and we put a handful in here. That way, while the rice is cooking, it 
will rehydrate and get soft and jammy. Then I take some unrefined sea salt, right? This is my favorite one. And then we take some black pepper. And then I'm gonna crank the heat up. But first I'm gonna taste this cooking liquid because I wanna make sure it's salted perfectly because this is the only time to season the rice. If you have bland rice at the end, you can't sprinkle salt. It won't absorb into the center of the grain. If I do it now, it will. It's the same principle of uh, kind of like pasta. You season it like the, the sea. Exactly, Shaheen. Shaheen got it, my girl, right? You season it like the sea because it's the only time to season and really let that salt penetrate down deep into the pasta or the rice grain. So all I do is literally stir it up and then I will taste it. That looks exhausting. Ooh, oh my God. Already, you guys. Why oh, about, why about the cooking? I just served yeah, that. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing crudo. I'm doing rice crudo. You guys, that is perfect. And then at the end, I might squeeze a little bit of lime zest and lime juice. Woo, I wish you can taste it right now. And I already got a little sweetness of that raisin and the aromatic uh, flavor of the uh, jasmine rice is perfuming the cooking liquid. So darn good. Arturo, back there, is a vessel filled with some avocado oil. You just got a super chat, Bobby, from Jeanette M, $1.99. You have opened my eyes and built up my confidence. Wow. You make me sound like Tony Robbins, Jeanette. Thank you so much for the super chat. You guys, super chat is a great way to support the channel, to have your comments seen. We always appreciate them. Another great way is to use the Amazon link in the description box and buy the book, right? The book is doing fantastic because of you. So many of you have it. So many of you have shared it with friends, told friends about it, and they've bought it. So keep spreading the love. It ships around the world, and the Amazon link is down below. Oh my, is that Scammer? Scammer payback. Scammer. Dude, you and your wife are insane. Wish you would do a keto-friendly beef with broccoli. Cheers from ATL. 1999. 1999. Thank you um, so much. Yeah, keto beef and broccoli. I'd have to work on that because it's the sauce. It's the sauce that's tough, but I'll bet I can do it because I can use a thickener like xanthan gum or I can do a thickener like, uh, and sweeten it with monk fruit. We got another Cody. super fan here. Super chat. What up, Cody? Cody Boudreau. It's Friday. It's Friday with Flav, Cody. High five for the super chat. Thank you guys so much. You're so supportive. We have literally, I think, the most supportive community on YouTube, 600,000 plus strong. You guys are amazing. You've let me quit my job back in 2017 and do this full time. I get to do what I love. I've never worked more in my life. I literally uh, work 24 seven every day of the week, but I do it for you and I love it. Yes, Tiffany Gee is clarified butter. <laughs> this, I wish people, you could have seen art. On my, on my microphone being yeah, this quiet, was art. So. Yes, Tiffany. Yes, he <laughs> confirmed he has used a clarified butter. <laughs> That was awesome. Oh my God. All right, so um, speaking of oil, Tiffany, so I'm using avocado oil. This is the big jug from Costco. If you have chosen food, God bless you. This is Marianne's, that's fine too. Um, the reason why I love cooking in this, it's a high heat oil that has no flavor and it's the heart healthiest oil you can possibly ever cook with. Avocado oil is high in oleic acid. It's good for your good cholesterol. It lowers your bad cholesterol. I would never fry in straight up canola oil. If you want a cheaper oil, get expeller pressed canola, non-GMO, peanut, safflower, or sunflower. Never straight up like corn oil or stuff like that. I thought algae oil is like the healthiest for your heart. Um, yeah, but that's like so expensive. That's a good point. Algae oil, uh, which you can buy at Walmart is, but like that's insanely expensive. I love avocado oil, but if you're allergic to avocados, use expeller pressed sunflower, or safflower, or peanut oil. Thank you, to Ashley Park, with another super chat. Ash. Love your oh, support. what up, Ash? Candace oh, Vandal, $10 super chat. Wow, you guys. Ashley, thank you so much. She loves the cookbook. Candice Vandal, thank you so much. Not even a comment. Kimberly, Kimberly she loves Flav City. Woohoo! What good sugar will you recommend? Erythritol is bad. I recommend monk fruit sweetener. There's a brand called Lacanto or Zen Sweet. Get them both on Amazon. They're fantastic. They're one to one swaps with uh, sugar. You've got a fan in Malmö, Sweden, who oh. wants me to read this to you. Yes. She is watching and she cooked. Uh, Mool marinara for dinner today. Lots of love from Sweden. Ooh, that sounds great. What kind of marinara? Mool. Mool, like, uh, is that like, uh, mussels? Mussels? Mool's marinara. M O U L E S. So mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce it at all. Mool's marinara? That's not, we were actually thinking about cooking mools tonight, but then Art's it's like, assuming that is. Art's like, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Did not say that. That was something else in the store. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. 
Um, Watch next week. You so you guys, we got 627 people right now. We're just getting, this party is just getting started. We're 20 minutes in. She, man, we ain't finish anything yet. We got rice about to go on the hob. We got cod about to be uh, tempura battered. Here's what you gotta do. You gotta take the link from this live stream and share it over to your Facebook wall, over to your Instagram story and say, yo, Bobby from Flav City is hanging out with my main man Art making the dopest crispy fish tacos. Come on over, spread the love. I'll see. Whoa! Whoa! Jonathan Barish, hello again. Have you ever used cauliflower flour before and how did that go? I just learned about that, I think two weeks ago, Johnny Boy, from a fan. I've never heard of it. Um, my, uh, let me experiment with it. My guess is that it's very hard to like bake with to make bread or keto bread. It's good for dredging. It's probably very, very dry, like um, coconut flour, but let me uh, hang on to that. You just got another super chat, Bobby. What? Farrah Muller, 15 bucks. Whoa! Thank Farrah. you, Bobby. Finally making cauliflower rice. The book is awesome. High five, Farrah. That's right. I don't have the book in front of me, but I think I make cauliflower rice the best. I give you tips on how to buy it, how to prepare it. They make the best cauliflower rice. It doesn't taste like you're sacrificing like for, for good rice. It actually is the closest you can get to really good rice. Char Troyer in the house. Char from Michigan. The feeling is forever. Long yeah, time Flav City. 90, 99 cent only store episode? Yeah, I do want to go to one of those. So guys, this has come to a boil. Lid on. Turn it down to a low, low, low simmer and then set a timer for exactly 20 minutes. I've made this recipe so many times. I know that 20 minutes on the dot it's going to be perfect. Where's this shirt from, by the way? Uh, this shirt is from the same place as they always are. Bad, Bad Pickle. Pickle. Bad yep. Pickle t-shirt. Yep. So, all right, let's go back to our stations. And I'm just going to put the cookbook in the background here because I want you all to remember it. So, yeah, Tiffany brought up a great point. I have literally a dozen, if not more, cauliflower rice recipes in here. And it's the best way to get your rice fix on the keto diet. Obviously, we're having real rice tonight. Um, and part of that is because Desi needs grains as part of her postpartum diet. But in there, it's such a good replacement. It gives you that feeling of rice without actually eating the starch. Okay, let's think. We got to save the fish until the last second because that needs to be done towards the end. We got our oil at 320. Good things are happening. And we also got a super chat from wow. Margaret. Margaret! Oh, Three Margaret! $10. Margaret is an Flip OG. City. Uh, Flav City fan. She started Thank on Facebook. She's a member of the Facebook uh, community group on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you, Margaret. You guys are so sweet. Okay, let's make the um, let's make the guacamole. You guys have seen me make this before. Once again, I'm gonna even more. Done with the white onion today. Yeah, I don't have red. That's why I forgot to get it. Uh, Bobby cleans the kitchen when we're done, and I help. Yes, he does. Art and I are. Question, Art and I do everything. We film and we cook and we clean. When Art's not here, I do the cooking and I do the cleaning. And since Jesse's mom is here, she's been helping me in all respects. Oh. Cheryl Hudson with a $1.99 super wow. chat. Thank you Wow, thank so you, much. Cheryl. You she guys are so supportive. She bought the and she buys organic. Cheryl, my girl, that's how we do it. You guys are very, very supportive. I really appreciate that. So I wanna put a fine dice on this. And I'm sure you guys have seen me do this before, but in case you're new to the channel, or haven't seen my best ever guacamole recipe, which you can just search on Google, Flav City Guacamole. Here's the key. You never actually put the lime juice directly in the guacamole. You pickle the red onions. What are you laughing at, Art? Sabrina's got her eye on Art. Oh, Sabrina. Hey. So, um, okay, go ahead. when I was in Mexico City with Desi a couple years ago, we had killer guacamole at this cool restaurant called La Gruta, which is the cave, right outside of Teotihuacan, the uh, pyramids, right? And it was so delicious and it wasn't really that acidic, but it had just the right amount of acid to it. And so I asked the amigo, you know, what's up with this? And he said, yo gringo, we never squeeze lime juice directly into the guacamole, because think about it. Lime is a very acidic, strong flavor. Avocados, are subtle and fruity and delicate, right? We don't wanna bash it over the head with the lime. So instead, they pickle onions, ideally red onions, in the lime juice for 15 minutes or two hours, and that's all the acid you need. Hey, babe. And it works like a charm. You can let this marinate for 
I don't know, all day if you wanted to. And plus it also takes away that raw flavor from the onions, which is really nice. How is Booger's doing out there? Sleeping? Oh, she's hungry? Bring her in if she's up. Everyone wants to see, you guys want to see Rose? Yeah, bring her in for a second. Okay. We got time before the fish goes down in the oil. You guys want to see Rose? Let's see some, uh, some hearts and some thumbs up. Let's see those come on in. Uh, Tiffany says that she and her husband never like healthy foods, but now she's uh, used to the recipes and loves them now. Love it, Tiff. Thank you, Bobby and Art. Love it. Uh, yes, mussels with white wine and cream, a French dish with lots of love from Elma, Sweden. Ah, that's the dish. Very cool. Calling for a year. Very that's cool. I love it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much all the stuff we make. I mean, I'm even going to say that the dish we're making tonight is healthy, right? Even though we're frying the fish, it's still gluten-free because we're using rice flour but it's not processed. We're not using crappy oil. This is still a healthy recipe. It's not low carb. That's why you buy the book, 125 low carb recipes that are gangbusters with flavor, will help you lose weight, will help you get off your diabetes medication, but you don't feel like you're on a diet. That's the beauty of it, right? Unli unlikely critic with a $5 super chat. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate that. I want to see Rose. All right, we'll get, we'll get her out. We'll get them out. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Rose is so beautiful. Why not? They say. Um, so we have to cut up some avocados. Avocados are still expensive, you guys. I don't know what's going on with the trade wars, okay, production, we gotta... but we have an issue Somebody, there. Somebody's a bit of a... There she is. My beautiful oh. young lady. Everyone say hello to the over two months old Rose Honey Parish. Huh? Huh? You know you love the limelight just like daddy. As soon as those lights go on that beautiful face, she gets all wide-eyed and she's like, hello everyone. So you guys, she is gaining weight so well. She's just over eight weeks old. For the most part, she's sleeping really well. And man, guys, we just weighed her yesterday, 12 pounds, two ounces. She's getting so big. Her eyes are so darn beautiful. Are you gonna be, huh, a stunner? Are you gonna be a stunner? She already is. She, uh, yeah, she already is, right? Right? Do you want to have your own YouTube channel one day and review food and makeup or whatever you want to do? You can do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Donnie, uh, Desi's mom, will be here just until the end of the month when she leaves. Things are going to be a little tougher, but maybe by then you'll sleep even more and be even easier for mommy and daddy, right? So everyone say goodbye to Rose. Say goodbye, Rosie. Oh, you want to smile? Hi, Rosie. <laughs> are those cheeks adorable? You guys, I want to eat them. Um, oh, Jeanette yeah. M just gave a dollar ninety-nine just for Rose. Ah, oh, oh, see that Rose? They love they're, you. They're the piggy bank. They love you. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's cut these avocados. The prices are not coming down yet. Still, at Aldi they're ninety-nine cents, but they used to be sixty-nine cents. At Whole Foods they're two dollars. At uh, Trader Joe's I think they're a buck sixty-nine. I bought the bag of five at Trader Joe's. And these are the mini ones. I feel like it's a slightly better deal, but I'm all about consistency. I actually don't mind paying a little more as long as they're consistently good. I can already feel this one might be a little watery, which is a bummer. See, when the, when the seed like smashes that easily, see, that's a bad Ooh. thing. Yeah. See, Urgh, Trader Joe's. Ooh, Sharon Merritt, four ninety nine, dollars Super Wow. Tight. Thank you, guys. Bobby, just wanted to tell you that I make your mango chia seed nice. all the time at Rocks. Your daughter is so cute. Thank you. I appreciate that. That is so sweet of you. That mango chia seed pudding is an old school recipe, but it's dairy-free and it's so darn delicious. In the cookbook, I have chocolate chia seed pudding. That is fantastic. So let's Gina, scoop this Gina out. Gina Knapp with the $1.99 Super Chat. We love your channel. Much love, Rochester, New York. Thank you. Loving the uh, Rochester love. New York State. I'm in a New York frame of mind right now, baby. So we'll just scoop that out. New York State of mind. State of mind, yes. Thank you. My favorite Billy Joel song. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Let me just see if this one's a good seat. I got, I got screwed. See, sometimes, look, you guys. Have more. You can, I have more. It's hard and watery. That bugs me out, right? So that's a bad one. Let me go to my bucket of avocados here and see if the other one's any good. This one feels like it might be a little bit better. But guys, do this. Look, always wash your avocados. There was a listeria breakout a couple months ago. It's because avocado skins are dirty. God knows where they go through in transit, what they touch. You have to wash it in hot soapy water, especially when you have pregnant ladies around or like new mommies. 
bad news. So let's hope this one's better here. That Russian roulette. That's, it shouldn't be Russian roulette. It's a little safer, I'd say. It's a little safer. But it's, it's pricey, right? What if you bought a $2 avocado? I will say this. The avocados at Whole Foods, even though the large ones are 2 bucks, they're consistently the best avocados you can get. You're paying for consistency. Yeah, I guess you're paying for it. Which Look what just happened. I just wasted, I don't know what that was, like maybe 35 cents to 50 cents. So would I rather pay a bit more? And sometimes that can be really, really big. So I'm keeping this super, super simple for my guac. I'm gonna go salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil, which is fantastic on, uh, on guac. Do you guys uh, do team chunky or team creamy when it comes to guacamole? Let me know. I'm a team chunky kind of guy. I like a little bit of texture and just kind of a little funky, you know? And it makes sense, right? Even though avocado is fat and extra virgin is fat, this is fruity or it's grassy, depending on what kind of extra virgin, and it creams out the texture so lovely. So folks, let me just remind you, we are at 760 Not right bad. now, which is awesome, but it's Fridays with Flav. We can do way better than that. Share the heck out of this yep. all over your social media and anywhere else you want to put it, news sites, anywhere. That's right. Get the word out. Let's get this thing up That's to right. 1,000 at least. Yeah, we've even said in the past, you can share it to Tinder, Farmers Only, right, Christian Singles, wherever people are interested in it's food. Farmers Only really is. Yeah. It's a real thing, yeah, for sure, man. Chunky, right? Eva's like Chunky Monkey. My girl Sherry Steinbach says Chunky. Oh, Belize. Ooh, team team, chunky. See, she's so proud, Belize, of uh, Chunky. She's like, I'm going to super chat it and let you guys know. So that means I stop here. Take a peek, Art. How do you feel, Art, about that kind of texture? That's all right. That's all right? All right. One time I went to a guy's house for a party, and I was helping him cook with everyone. He kept mashing and mashing and mashing. He turned it into like soup and I'm like, dude, what are you doing, right? So that's done. I'm gonna add the uh, onions later on. Ash girl, our highest viewer count was getting close to a thousand. Yeah, why we just shy. I think it was 990 maybe, so that's why we think we can break So Art, when you wanna store your guacamole, look, don't do this. No, no, you can't do that. Tell Art why we don't do this. Tell Art why? Yeah, well Art, tell why. Because you still got air underneath there. You got to push it all the way down onto the uh, fruit of the avocado so you, that it doesn't oxidize. Would you say I have to push it real good? You have to push it real good. <laughs> <laughs> so Art's 100% right. Air is the enemy. And a four ninety nine super chat is awesome. Wow. From Mel Barrera. Wow, Thank Mel. You. Next time, splitting the avocado in half half crunchy and half creamy, and it's so good. That's ah. how I often do it sometimes. Ah, to make everyone happy. That made no sense. That's how I often do it sometimes. Uh, like half the batch, you mean? Yeah, like ah. pure, okay. puree the first one really good, and then uh, leave the next Got one. Got you. Shelf. Well, we live in a, uh, a communist kitchen here where we go is my rule. If I say it's chunky, it's chunky for all. <laughs> this is a... Socialist Republic. We do not have choices here. We only have one guacamole. <laughs> right? Okay, so that's done. Uh, here's what I think we can do. I think we can start frying the, um, the fish because we have to do it in batches and we can't overcrowd the oil. So here's what I want to do. We're at 330, which is brilliant. Afghanistan in the house. Wow. Afghanistan? Welcome. What up? That's awesome. Thank you so much. I've never tried Afghani cuisine. I'm very curious because I love um, Middle Eastern food. So here's my fish of choice. It is wild caught cod. I picked it up today at Whole Foods. Thank you, Char, with a super chat. Char Troyer? $9.99. Oh, Char, thank you so much. Char, the old school Flav City fan from Michigan. The feeling is forever. So you want to use a fish that's flaky and somewhat oily for this. Halibut or cod are the prime examples. I mean, heck, you could even do salmon if you wanted to but it'd have to be a fattier salmon. But cod is traditional, I thought also. So Art and I were in Whole Foods meandering the aisles for a good 20 minutes, trying to figure out what to make here. And we stumbled upon this. So what's the best way to cut this? I think if we go into fillets like this, like that's gonna be perfect for the uh, taco. So we're gonna batter this in rice flour, egg, and bubbly water. 
We were debating using beer, but I only have Guinness and I don't want the batter to be super dark. And I think I'll season that batter too with some cumin and coriander. Yes, Shaheen, it's cod. Yes, Art said we should use uh, Mickey's malt liquor for this. <laughs> he said it'd be the first time anyone- yeah, nobody's ever done that. Has ever done that, and that was a really good point. But I just, I just felt like that wasn't the right thing I was going for tonight. Good question from Shaheen. Could he use halibut instead? Oh, absolutely. Shaheen, I said halibut and cod are perfect. I'd almost say halibut's better, but halibut's like twice the price. And I didn't feel like spending that much money, to be honest. I'm going to guess rice flour is not keto. That's a question mark. Nope. So no, this whole recipe is not keto, but it's gluten-free. So a lot of times you have a tempura and it's all-purpose flour. Or sometimes they even put cornstarch and it's GMO corn. Um, there's no way to make a keto tempura batter. Some people do it with a whey protein. I experimented making fried chicken with whey protein. Ugh, it was grody, really grody. And like I said earlier, I saw a comment on Wednesday that said, hey, do you ever make non-keto recipes? And we usually don't, but I said, yeah, let's do it, man. And so that's why I wanted to break out my big guns. Like, who doesn't want to eat tempura fried cod? Who doesn't want to eat my best ever coconut cashew golden rice? Ooh, so good, right? Now, this is done. Let us make our batter. So this is what we're using for the primary ingredient. Check it out, Art. Bob's, the OG, Red Mill rice flour. Rice flour is great because it's light in texture and it is gluten-free. I'll need equal parts rice flour and sparkling water, but first I wanna take one egg yolk here, and I want to put that in. The egg yolk is gonna make the batter super golden, really nice, and the reason why I'm using bubbles is because the bubbly water is gonna make it really crispy and light. You can use regular water if you want, but it's all about that effervescence, that lightness, that's really, really nice when it comes to a batter. Tempura batter, isn't it traditionally with the egg white rather than the yolk or not? Uh, no, okay. uh-uh, it's not. Shaheen says you should have kept the white. You know, I was thinking about that, Shaheen, but like to go get another vessel, I, sometimes I'm lazy, I'm sorry. Shaheen always catches me, you guys. Shaheen's like, she's like my sister from another mister, always watching what I do. So now Could I you want use to. almond flour instead? No, it won't okay. work as a tempura. So if you wanted to make this keto, it wouldn't be tempura. I would just uh, first put the fish in egg wash and then pack almond flour all over it and then deep fry it. But it's not a tempura batter, right? Zafa thinks this is way better than Food Network. Whoa! Zafa does? Thank you so much. That's so. Hey, listen, if this were Food Network, you'd be having a lot of commercials for crappy products and food. You probably don't want to eat. This is more fun to get to hang out, right? And that's actually why I started uh, my channel many years ago. I wanted to get on Food Network Stars so bad, right? And they denied me. And so Desi and I were so bummed out and we're like, let's just start a YouTube channel, see what happens. Hey, before you get too far, just check yes. this. Uh, how's the battery doing here? Uh, one on the RX. Okay, hopefully that's enough. Hopefully it's enough. So. We're like, let's just start a YouTube channel, see what happens. The rest is history. I wouldn't even go on like a Food Network star now. Crafty Clark, thank you so much. Dollar ninety nine. So oh, thank you, Crafty. So, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of coriander. The egg goes in there. I want to whisk that first. Then I'm gonna add one cup of sparkling water. Once again, the bubbles are just gonna be so nice for this. Very effervescent. Yes, I'm all about those bubbles on my tongue. Is there any particular kind of cod that we're using, or just cod? It's, I mean, it's wild caught cod, which is nice, but you can use any kind of cod you want. So stir that together, and then I'll measure out one cup of this rice flour. And uh, then, oh, you might need different quantities sometimes. If it's really humid outside, maybe you need, need to add more liquid. If it's really dry, maybe you need to add, you know, more rice, or maybe the other, the other way around, but you get what I'm saying. So one cup of this goes in, and then don't really go crazy stirring it, just get it until it comes together. But see those bubbles, like that's nice, right? Bubbles! Michael Jackson likes bubbles, and I like bubbles. What's that for? Oh, Michael Jackson had the chimpanzee named Bubbles. Oh, that's his name? Yeah! Okay. So look, that's pretty much what you want, you guys. See that? Absolutely lovely. So I'm gonna let that hydrate for just a minute, and then, Art, check this out. 
here's how we're gonna manage our oil. We have avocado oil back here. Once again, guys, I've never done this much deep frying. So Wednesday we did the deep fried, uh, what did we make again? Oh, the pork, pork chops. chops. The previous Friday we did the deep fried uh, shrimp. coconut shrimp. Now we're making deep fried uh, tempura. You know what, it's kind of like one of those things when it rains it pours. I almost never fry like this, but you know, sometimes you're just in a frying kind of thing. How do I know the temperature? Once again, I use my infrared gun here and I see that right now it's a little low, it's only 320. So I'm gonna raise the heat up. I want this to be 350. And this measures surface temperature. It won't tell you the internal temperature of a steak. It'll tell you the temperature of the pan. It'll tell you the temperature of my skin, which is 93, sounds about right. So I'm gonna bring my fish and everything over here because you kind of want this to go pretty fast. You ever had pomfret fish? Uh, what's it called? Pomfret? I don't think so. She can ask about that. No. Mohammed, we're seven hours behind you. Ah. 640 here. Okay, now we'll season our fish. Don't just dip that in there because guys, the fish is bland, right? So I'm gonna season the fish with a good pinch of salt and some pepper on both sides. And then once it comes out of the batter, I'll season it with more salt. How would this work with chicken if you don't like fish? Oh, perfectly. Cut it into strips. I would use uh, chicken thighs because you have more fat. They won't dry out. It will work perfectly. Chicken thighs cut to roughly this size and be perfect. Is there any time that you, Bobby, would use chicken breast over chicken thighs? Pretty much never, to be honest. That's what I thought. Yeah, never. They're more expensive and there's less flavor. That's a losing combination for me. So we're almost there. I got to give that another second or so. Um, the rice has about, oh, seven seconds. So the rice is done. Check this out, you guys. This is the big reveal. Is it cooked through? Is it overcooked? Dun, 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 dun. Hot, heat off. We go in. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Look at this. Never fluff rice with a spoon. You will mash the grains. Oh, yes. I told you guys, 20 minutes is perfection. Can I get some thumbs up? Can we make the thumbs up go from 176 to over 200? Because this rice is perfectly cooked. Those raisins got plump and juicy and you know it's gonna be so good, but we're not done. We're gonna finish that in a second, but let's get back our to here. Check our temperature, 345. I think that's close enough. Crafty Clark, 399 Super Chat. Oh, thank you, Crafty. I appreciate that. The so, book is available electronically too, not just hardback. Yes, but I recommend the hardcover. It's way yeah, better. Yeah, get the hardback. It's hardcover, way better. All right, okay. so drip off the excess, place it in the oil. That's what you want. Absolutely perfect. And I think I could only get maybe three pieces or so in there at a time. But see how it coats it? And there's bubbles in there, right? Very, very lovely. Shake Don off the excess. <laughs> the Don Ho. Yeah. This is only going to take, I'm guessing, two, three minutes max. Somebody please remind me to check this. It will go from golden brown to overcooked very quickly. So I think that's good enough. And then once you put stuff in oil, raise the heat just a little bit because what happens? The fish is cold or even room temperature, it lowers the temperature of that oil. Evie has a question. What do you think about air frying this? Um, well, it won't really work that well with a tempura batter. The thing is air frying is great. The baskets aren't the biggest, right? You're never gonna get it quite as crispy. For me, I don't fry that often, although it seems like we fry a lot recently. So I want that like, really hard crust and like that slightly oily exterior. When you actually fry at proper temperatures, it's not soaking up that much oil, so it's actually fine. Now, when it comes out of the oil, I have to put it on a prepared rack here to drain away the excess oil. If you really want to live large, could you do this with lobster? <laughs> um, yes, you certainly can. Actually, the lobster tails were on sale at uh, Whole Foods. I was thinking about it, but I was like, nah. Did you just fry? Uh, no, I was thinking about just doing something oh, okay. with them. Yeah, but that actually would be a cool. Who makes lobster tempura tacos? If you do that, dude, high five to you. You're dude, how about next week on the show? <laughs> You're a baller. <laughs> You're a total baller. It's uh, it's turmeric rice, uh, Maria. Pino. Yeah. So here's how I want to finish. Golden coconut turmeric rice with coconut milk. And what do we do to reinforce that coconut flavor? Get in there, Art. That is un unsweetened shredded coconut flakes. Let's add some of that 
here. By the sure. way, Shaheen made the lobster comment. Oh, good. Shaheen, great call. Lobster must be really expensive in Dubai, I'm guessing. So that goes in there. See you, Lee. Then we'll add a little bit of, let's do lime zest and lime juice. Because I think that lovely acidic flavor is going to make the flavors pop. We're using avocado oil. Yes. All right, but stick with that announcer voice. We are using avocado oil, folks. We are using avocado oil. <laughs> so a little bit of lime zest, because limes and coconut, isn't that like a... A the song, you put that lime in the coconut, something uh, like that. Whoever just asked about the rice, we are using jasmine rice. <laughs> Basmati or jasmine rice is preferable because it's Check very... Check the fish! <laughs> they just uh, reminded. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I can see. Take a look, guys. Look at that. It's not... The color isn't there yet. Ooh, Johnny with a super chat. Oh, Johnny! Hello, Bobby. Love your channel. I live in an apartment. The stove is absolutely garbage. What's a good countertop burner? I have one for you. Um... So just go to Amazon, look up Gas One, Gas One Portable Burner. It's 20 bucks, and you put these little butane tanks in there. It's amazing, Johnny. Yeah, I use that actually. I used to use that when we made the cooking videos a lot, um, and it's fantastic. Howdy, Christy. So, all right, really quickly, let's chop up some green, on green onion. Maria, you're late to the party. Baby Flav was out here. Oh, you Rose. missed Rose. Yeah. Right Maybe she'll be there earlier. So a little bit of green onions are going to be nice. And then we'll chop up some cashews too. It's going to be bomb.com, all right? So all these go in my rice. Now we're just re reinforcing the flavors. Meanwhile, let's just check really quickly how our fish is doing here. Check it out, our Arturion. So we don't have the color yet, right? Yeah, so so, so just, well, wait. Pale for us. That's right. Well, just wait. Ain't no rush. Let's check the temperature. Make sure we're still somewhat decent here. You're cooking with gas. Whoa. So it dropped. Whoa, it dropped. So you know what I want to do, you guys? I was afraid that burner is too small. So what I'm going to do, be very, very careful when you move that. Switcheroo. Switcheroo to the bigger burner. I should have thought of that earlier, but it's fine. If anything, the first couple might be a little soggy. It tends to happen. It's kind of like when you make crepes or pancakes. The first batch ain't the best, right? Shout out to one of your fans watching in Ghana right now. Ooh, Ghana. Okay. Nice. Love to hear that. Oh, and then cashews. Let's chop up some of that. So this rice has everything. It's a little sweet. It's a little crunchy. You can put red chilies in there if you want to make it a little spicy. I didn't do that because Jesse's breastfeeding and I don't want any heat for the baby. But it's such a symphony of flavors and textures. It's fantastic. You probably can recycle the oil if you strain it well. But yes. I don't think Bobby's going to. <laughs> All right, how dare you? No, you could totally, you guys, you can use oil like that up to three times. You just have to strain it through, um, you know, mesh or something. But Art's probably right. I'm too, I'm too late. I'm too lazy. Well, <laughs> when you've been frying a lot lately. <laughs> and I just threw away the egg white, for God's sakes. Past but, performance <laughs> may not be an indicator of future growth, but uh, in the stock right. market. Guys, look at this now. All of a sudden, it's like, whoa. Have you ever seen a rice like that? It's very actually Middle Eastern style, but I like to call it Mexican-ish because we can pull it off. Now, let's check that for seasoning. I'm, I'm thinking there's a chance it might need some lime juice, but that's about it. Bienvenidos, Rosa, Mexico. Wow. So flavorful. You've never had a rice so creamy. From that coconut milk, it's gangbusters. But I do want a little squeeze of lime juice in there. Lobster tails in Dubai are around 30 US dollars per 120 grams. Oh, so. that hurts, man. That hurts. Where's my lime juice here? Welcome to Singapore, 7.45 a.m. Nice, Singapore. Singapore is one of the biggest foodie cultures in the world. I was there maybe 12 years ago. Went to the hawker markets, which are their food courts. It was fantastic. Yes, those are raisins and the rice. Yep. Whoever just asked. Correct. So, guys. This is the best rice you'll ever taste. It's so good. I used to have the recipe on my website. I don't think I have it anymore. Shaheen looks like you added the zest to the rice. I did. Check it out, Shaheen. You'd be proud of me, right? You know I ain't gonna. Zesty and you know it. And Cheryl Hudson is a super fan. Oh. With a $1.99 super chat. Wow, Cheryl's made the meal preps for home and for work. That's the best, Cheryl, because you don't want to go to work with no lunch and then go out to like a crappy subway or some fast food and eat low quality food, you bring the homemade stuff that is delicious and nutritious. That's what it's all about. Marilyn Milton with a two minute warning. Ah, thank you. So let's see what's going on here. And SLR says to use apricots instead of raisins. Yeah, I was summer. gonna Yeah, I was gonna do that, but I don't have good apricots. 
So I think it's only more color. Don't it they? still needs more color. So let's just see here. I'm going to pull one out here. It needs more color. And I think by getting off to a slow start, we kind of screwed ourselves. But let me just see what's how this feels here. This is probably this is not the best uh, utensil. Let me grab one right here. Art. You got a spider. Uh, I don't have a. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. Here's my spider. Let's see what's going on here. What's going on in the kitchen? So it's it is crunchy, but I can tell that we had the oil a little too low. So I think the first batch is going to be a shade oily, but the second batch is going to be great. And I do want to keep these warm. So let's put the oven on to the warm setting. Unlikely critic with a great question here. Hey, where's your splatter guard? Oh, good question. You know what? The thing is, I don't really need it here because I have such a deep pan that it's not really splattering over, but I, I do see a little bit. Yeah, I should use it. I'm going to use it now. Thank you. Uh, Susie Bosch, we're using avocado oil. Okay. So rice is done. Fish is underway. Uh, the batter looks great. I need to make the uh, slaw. Really basic slaw. So there's a place in Chicago called Antique Taco, which is my favorite, art favorite, Desi's favorite. And they make a tempura taco with fish that is dynamite. And you're not going to switch to sparkling water. It's Friday. Let's live a little bit, right? Hello from Freeport, Illinois. And um, they make this smoked red cabbage slaw. And they actually smoke it, which I can't do at home. But I do have some chipotles and adobo sauce. And that'll be my way to get that smoky kind of chipotle flavor in there. I love sparkling water. Oh, my God. It's so good. Love it. Crafty Clark with another super chat. Four nine. Wow. <laughs> Last question. Oh, this is from Art. You read it. Uh, what wireless mic are you using? Sounds great. Bobby is the only one with the wireless mic, and it is a Rode. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know their particular model name, but... Uh, I think they only have, like... It's not that new one that's really tiny that just clips onto something. It's got a pack and a lavalier mic attached to it, but it works well. I'm wired in with a Rode adapter going into the phone. Yep. Okay. Let me get a large bowl out of here. A slaw. We're gonna make a slaw and an avocado chipotle dressing. It's gonna be really easy. So I'm gonna start with the red cabbage here. Shaheen says place the cap on or you'll lose the carbonation in the water. Oh, thank you, Shaheen. See, I told you guys, Shaheen is my sister from another mister. I appreciate that. Sometimes I like to take the outer layer away because it's been sitting in my fridge for a couple days. This is really simple, right? So I'm just gonna make really fine slices here, and then dress it with mayonnaise that's mixed in with chipotle, chilies, and adobo sauce, because it's basically free flavor, right? It's just so easy. And I wanna make this super fine, super fine. And then guys, we still have to char the tortillas. I need to get one of those warming baskets. You know, the Mexicans, they char tortillas and they keep, this, keep them in this little like styrofoam container to keep them warm and humid. They're like a dollar. I gotta stop at some little tienda and pick one up because I'm always just toasting them and then putting them on a plate lined with uh, lined with wet paper towel. It's not as good. What do they call those tortilla warmers besides a tortilla warmer? I'm gonna get smart with the inside of that. <laughs> What's that? A, tor a tortilla no, warmer? Probably, yeah. I deserve that one. Let me check how that fish is doing here. So we got, we got more color here, right? And it, it is nice and crispy here, folks. And I know the fish is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this batch out because I don't want to overcook it. And we'll get some better color. We're going to evacuate them too. I'm going to evacuate them right here, my wire rack, right? So they're actually quite crispy, but I didn't get the color I wanted because I... Uh, my temperature was a little low. Remember what I said? I said, oh, it's 345. It was, uh, it's good to go. I should have waited. Uh, Evie Puerta says it's a tortillero. Ah, tortillero. Ah. Roberto. And uh, Stella said the same thing. Roberto, quiero un tortari tortario? Tortillero. Tortillero nuevo. Por supuesto. Hey, when it comes out of the oil, a little bit of salt on top. Sticks to the crust, adds more flavor. Now, I mean, guys, look at this. It is super crispy. It's just missing the color. Listen, can you see that? It's 
like a potato chip. It's really, really nice. And I want to keep them warm. So I have my oven set on the warm setting. Put it right in there. Now, let's get this oil to proper temperature so I can do this the right way here. See, 323, we're not there. I totally screwed myself. Your but oven's electric, right? Yes, that oven's will, electric. Keep it better than the gas will. Gas to make it soggy. That's right, gas creates the humidity. Ah, thank you, Arturo. So I'm gonna season some more fish here. We'll do three or four pieces again. So a little bit of salt. And once again, guys, look at the color of the salt I'm using. This is the unrefined sea salt, right? It's the one from Utah. It's that company I like called Redmond and it's pure unrefined. It hasn't been bleached. It hasn't been processed. So it has like over 50 minerals that you can find in the earth in there. And it has a complex flavor. When you get white salt like this, it's been bleached and processed. And all you have is just salt flavor, right? The sodium chloride. It doesn't have that nuanced flavor that this has because the minerals are offering a lot of flavor in there. This stuff is not good in my book. I only use that stuff. Okay, now let's see. I want, the, uh, I want this to be 350 and I refuse to put it in there until it gets there. 351. Let's double check it. We're there. Okay, so back in this guy art. Check it out. We go in the dredgy. You shake off the excess. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. That sounds better, right, Art? That's, that's aggressive. Be aggressive. Be -e aggressive. That's the kind of sizzle sizzle you want to hear. Now it should really take, I don't know, I'd say two to four minutes. Like I said, I've never made this before. I'm just going by what I think is going to work. I've seen it done a million times on TV, but I've never actually done it. I've been watching that TV. They've been frying up that fish. I said, I can do that at home. All right, three pieces. That's good. It's getting hot in here, y'all. Are you going to crank up the heat? Yes, thank you. A, a little bit. It's already really, really hot. But this is, you can see the bubbles, right? Bubbles, y'all see my bubbles, right? It's already <laughs> bubbling way, way more than it did last time. And look, we didn't drop. We're at 320. We didn't drop as low as last time. I got to 270 last time, right? It's dropping. No, no, it was just probably a bubble. So that's actually what you want. I'm not going to go higher than that. That's perfect. And now I will put the splatter guard on. Bobby, Bobby are you Southern? Shooey! I'm from the southern part of the northern part of Chicago, and Grandpappy used to make moonshine in the back garden. He slapped me in the butt if I got too close to the steel. So that's a hard, <laughs> that's a hard no. <laughs> that's a hard no. But in my, my spirit animal, part of me is southern, and part of me is uh, Spanish, too. Something about that, right? Let's keep making this, you guys. Uh, do I recommend pellet smokers? My friend has one. Um, I think they're a great idea if you grill a lot. And I think in my next house, when we have a backyard and outdoor kitchen, I want a pellet smoker for sure. Because it's easy, right? You can just make a few burgers if you want, or you can do like a really big smoking thing and get that nice hardwood smoke in there. So Kay Dunker wanted me to repeat what I was saying about yes. the oven. So if you want to keep your fried food warm, yeah, you can keep it in the oven. But if you've got a gas oven, the combustion process of natural gas produces uh, some water vapor. So it might make it a little soggy, but I'd rather have hot food that might be a little less crispy than uh, cold food. Electric oven doesn't let out the water vapor. So wow. Art nerd is alert, nerd, nerd, alert. Nerd, nerd alert. Art is rattling off those numbers like he's Alton Brown, you guys. Probably got that from Elton Brown. I'll give him credit on that one. That's right. That's right. Art's the man, ladies. Okay, so that is good. And then I think we can amp up the crunch maybe even more in this thing and put some pepitas. Pepitas are Mexican pumpkin seeds. Incredibly good for you. Such a healthy fat. I love them. So let's just grab some. I got it from Trader Joe's. They're a little pricey. Actually, you know what? I don't have too many left. These are them. I like to save them for my breakfast bowl. So I'm, I'm actually going to save them. But these are fantastic. Get the uh, raw ones. So they still have the nutrients alive in there. Let's just put some uh, sunflower seeds. The cheaper. They call me Senor Barato. <laughs> little bit of sunflower. Como se dice sunflower seed? Or sunflower nuece? How do you, como se dice en español? 
for this so <laughs> ah so these are looking good what's that i don't know what seed is but yeah me neither for this so art is very good and intelligent yes he is terry yes he is you and art should go on the road i got some stuff planned for the future road of course, of course i don't know about any of that of course not road ha anything. halls and stuff like that i got some good ideas so super easy dressing y'alls uh seeds are semillas de girasol. girasol girasol wow that's that's a sunflower semilla de girasol i'll never remember that that's brutal Woo. whoa now katie's fighting she's like no no back off art is mine i thought I thought you had dibs on Paul the other day. Whoa, yeah. Come on, Katie. You want Paul one day? Arthur, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Pick your most eligible bachelor and stick with that one, right? Okay. While the girls are cat fighting that out, I'm going to make the most easy dressing ever here. So a little bit of avocado oil, mayonnaise. Girasol. Yeah, okay. We were both pronouncing it. Girasol. Ah, Girasol. thank you. A little bit of salt. Girasol. And then, guys, these are chipotle peppers. Trivia, what is a chipotle, right? A chipotle is a dried pepper. What's the fresh version of a chipotle? Someone tell me. And I am going to check my pescado over here. Beautiful. It's already super, super crispy. But also, guys, keep in mind, I just realized this, we're using uh, rice flour, so it's not going to get quite as crispy as all-purpose flour because it doesn't have the gluten in there. I just realized that. But Art, check it out. These are done. Check it before I wreck it, Art. I'm going to grab my... Your fans know that it's jalapenos. Ah, oh, they know? Good. I, I mean, I expect you all to do it, but sometimes you never know. So check it out. It's not quite as golden as you might expect, but it's a little more golden than these. But guys, they're littered. I wish you can feel it. I can feel it on the spider. It's crispy AF. I mean, can you see this? That's like a mountain of tempura. And then once again, while it's season hot. Season them bad boys. Exactly, while they're hot, season them bad pescados. But guys, that's the reason why we're using rice flour. I totally forgot. It'll never get more golden than this, but at least it's gluten-free. We're making a dish that has a lot of starch, but 100% gluten-free, which I think is important because I believe gluten is very inflammatory. Then, We'll check the temperature here. See, we, 317, we didn't drop too much. So while that's recovering, let's season the rest of the pescado. And I think we'll do it in two more batches here. Donna, we're using cod. Yes, we're using a wild caught cod. I get it at Whole Foods because they have very sustainable seafood there. All right, here's a good question, Bobby. Yes. If you had a food truck, what would it be? Whoo! So here's the deal. I would never open a restaurant. If you had to like force me to do something in the restaurant business, I would do a food truck because it's flexible and you can go where the customers are. What would it be? Well, it'd be easy. It'd be a keto paleo food truck. I believe there's such a need in the market right now for the kind of recipes we make in the cookbook and almost every day except today. Like imagine I had a food truck that traveled around doing healthy keto and paleo and Whole30 recipes. Or I had this great idea in my head to do um, keto, Whole30, and paleo, but do it via delivery with Grubhub or Uber Eats or Caviar. Set up a shared kitchen, have a team cook my recipes. There's no one doing that. I know my recipes are best in class, and I think people want to order something besides like pizza, burgers, and sushi. So that's what I would do. Okay, check it out, Art. Where's my temperatura? That's not there yet, see? It really takes, this is a great lesson, you guys, because it takes a long time for the oil to recover. You know, if you don't fry a lot, which I don't, this is where this gun comes in handy because we were at 350 before. I dropped all the way down to 315 and now we're rallying back, right? We're coming back to the 350 mark. If I were to put it in now, we had the same problem we had with the first one. The oil is just not hot enough. Um, so in the meantime, Art, right, stay here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the adobo sauce. I actually don't even need the chipotle. So the adobo sauce is a vinegary, uh, garlicky sauce that they pack the chipotles in. And that's all I need. And all of a sudden, it gets a nice color to there. I take a little bit of lime juice, probably more than that. And that's it. I've missed this question a couple times here. Tell uh, me. What about the negative effects of avocado in Mexico? I've stopped eating avocado. Do you know what negative effects they'd be referring to? I don't know what that means. Okay. Besides the maybe, price right now? You can clarify. Yeah. That. Thank you. No entiendo este pregunta. So now I just want to taste it. Is it smoky enough? Uh, 
Put some liquid smoke. So you could, no. Oh, that's really good. See, it has the right heat. It tickles me on the back note, not the front. That's dynamite. Totally done there. Let's check this. So guys, things are coming along. As soon as I drop this batch, let's start toasting some tortillas. Oh, three, oh, it went too much. 355, let's get them in. Plunge that temperature. Let's plunge that temperature, son. And then we're gonna toast some tortillas. Even though I don't have a torta, tortarillo? Tortiero. Tortiero. All I want for Christmas is a tortiero. <laughs> wow. Could you use oat fiber for tempura? Uh, no, it's the wrong texture. It won't work, unfortunately. You could use it for oatmeal though, right? Yes, you can. Okay, so that's down. The avocado industry has wrecked havoc. On what? On Mexico, I guess. So oh, he how? says Google it and you'll find a lot of info. Interesting. I mean, it's kind of like the almond industry here. It's wreaked havoc on the water table and this and that. The thing is like, what are we supposed to eat? I'd rather eat avocados and almonds than, you know, canola oil and uh, grain fed uh, beef and like crappy uh, like pork. So it's like, everything's gonna have an effect. We're such a big economy. The world is so big. If we start eating a lot of avocados, there's gonna be some issues, right? But we want that good fat that good fat in our body, that healthy heart, healthy fat. That's how it rolls, right? So I, I feel you, I'll look into it. All right, so this is done here. So Delia has a great uh, comment here. She Tell fries me. in one of those Le Creuset pans, they maintain the temperature. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow, you mean so like one of these? Yeah. Oh, though I don't have, the yeah, Le Creuset the, Dutch the, ovens? Yeah, 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 the one you normally got there. Interesting, the thing is, I would need so much oil. Yeah, that's part of it. To fill this up. Now they do make smaller ones, right? Which I don't have. Maybe you should get But it. yeah, this, so this is really high quality French cast iron enameled. And you're, that's a great point. Uh, who's that, Delia? Delia. Great point. It retains the heat really well, so it won't drop. I mean, I have a really nice pan. Look, this is an all clad pan, which retains heat very well, but nowhere near cast iron quality, right? Hey, how about using brown rice flour, flour on this? Brown rice flour, yes. I think that would work. It might be a little healthier. Um, but I'm not sure because you have that outer hull on the brown rice, I'm not sure it's gonna be quite as good. That's a good question though, very good question. People are asking if you have to wash your fish first. No, 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 no. Never wash fish, never wash chicken. Any potential salmonella or germs will be killed in the hot oil. But when you wash stuff, splatter goes everywhere and you spread that salmonella, it's terrible. I always get people, especially around the holidays, should I wash my uh, turkey? No, do not do that. It's a total old wives tale. So guys, we're in the home stretch right now. Let's start toasting some tortillas. I can't get over this rice. You guys, look. The coconut cashew golden turmeric rice. Give me a spoon, I wanna try some. All right, Art wants to try it, <laughs> see? And hold on, let me put it down. I'm gonna Art can try it on camera Ooh. so he can give you his the full rundown. honest opinion. Because we know Art loves his detailed reviews of food. Everyone That's say right. hi to Art, by the way. Hi, everybody. I'm not gonna talk after in a second. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> All right, it's done. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, can you fry in regular cast iron? Absolutely. It's the same, same effect. Use a large cast iron pan. Totally fine. So I am going to start toasting tortillas. Now, there are healthier tortillas out there made from sprouted grain, but Art and I saw this. This is like an old school Chicago company. It's, it's not non-GMO corn, but it's really good quality, authentico. Sometimes I get the non-GMO ones, but they were a little too big and they, uh, sometimes they have a weird texture. They do have ones now where they do half gluten, half wheat, and half uh, corn, and it's a great texture. But these are super traditional, so I think these are gonna work great. Mohammed wanted me to read a question. Yes. He's, he's talking about this Persian rice dish that my uh, neighbor used to make. She was from Persia, and mm. I loved it. It's got uh, some saffron in it, and some uh, suresh, which is a Persian berry. I know exactly what wow. you're talking really? about. Wow, really? Get this nice, good, crusty bit on the bottom, and uh, it's, it's awesome. Well, no, I've seen that before, and you kind of cook it in a pan that has this shape. And you bake it, right? Or I never saw her make it. And I, I you turn it out like this, but and you the take the pan off, right? The crunchy, the crunchy crust. Like the socarat, right? Yeah, I've seen that before. I assume that's what he's talking about. For sure. Yeah. And you make it kind of like in a pan like this, Mohammed, and then you turn it out, and it's like a dome like that, right? So 
Abuelo always said, mi hijo, mi hijo, necesita poner la tortilla en el fuego, el fuego más sabor, más sabor, oh, más sabor. So that's what I'm doing. If abuela, abuela says it, I do it. Okay, Sabrina. Okay. Go Cubs is right, Ariana. Yeah, Cubs aren't doing so hot right now. Hello, Nancy. Blew a five to one lead in the ninth Here. inning. Oh, yeah. Blarf. Anastasia. Okay, so that's good for here. Dunker. I still, I need that tortadillo. I need that tortadillo, man. Okay, see how that puffs up? That's a sign that it's a good tortilla. Ah, so, just like Abuela said it, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Abuela said it just like that. Perfecto. Mijo. Bobby, you're hilarious. Más sabor con la tortilla en el fuego. Lisa Lopez, why not wash fish or chicken? You're, you're going to cross-contaminate stuff. Water's not going to do anything to get the germs off. Only cooking it will. Exactly. And you're probably going to drip chicken germs everywhere, or it's going to splash off the chicken onto something next to the sink, next to your knife. You're going to use your knife to make some salad. You're going to have cross-contamination, and you're not going to be happy. Exactly. Listen, if mom or grandma told you to do that, they're wrong. It's yeah. a horrible, horrible idea that comes from old grandmothers and stuff like that. You don't want to do that. Okay, uh, a little bit of salt. See, uh, Mohammed says you have to make that rice dish. It's exactly. Yeah, you know what? I, okay, I want to make that. What's the name again, Mohammed? I'm gonna salt that. So this is coming out great, guys. We got off to a little slow start because of my user-generated error, but now we're doing great. Let's take these tortillas Bobby, off. Bobby, you can use monkfish too. Funny, we we're just talking about monkfish. Yeah, too. monkfish is poor man's lobster, but it's actually hard to find unless you go to a fish place for that. A fishmonger. I love that word, fishmonger. So 3.30, we dropped. See guys, I put it in a 3.55 and we're at 3.25 right now. So that's 30 degrees. It's, it's really amazing, science. Science is a wonder, ain't she? In the meantime, let me get some more tortillas here. Yeah, so you're having a good time. This is fun, right? Our second live stream of the week. We're making, I mean, this is a pretty legit dinner. It's not an easy one, but we've been hanging out for, wow, an hour and 12 minutes, right? Having a good time. Um, before the video started, I put the final touches on tomorrow's video, which is going to be back to school snack haul part two. Sunday is the natural flavorings video. And then today we filmed the video all about deli meat, what deli meat to buy and avoid and why. That'll come out next week. Nada says they call the crispy rice Tadik. T-A-H-D-E-E-K. I don't okay. I'm sorry if I botched that pronunciation. Tadik. I'm not good. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll make that because, you guys, I have some killer Iranian saffron <laughs> in my pantry. I got this in Istanbul. Check this out, Art. This is um, like really high quality Iranian saffron. Two grams. How much did that cost? Um, actually, it was, well, it's cheap there because the currency is so darn cheap. This cost about 25 bucks, which if you bought that here, it'd be I mean, 75 bucks to $100. Um, but this is fantastic. I usually use it for teas and such, but um, I need to. I actually made a rice dish with this this winter, and a bunch of uh, my Arab followers on Instagram said, I'm supposed to crush that up first and put it in hot water to bloom, which I didn't. And they said it'll be a lot better if I do that. Mickey said he won't be able to eat after Sunday. Natural flavors are in everything. Well, then binge on the natural flavors before you see the <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, the gist of the video is that they are in everything, and it's the biggest lie in the grocery store because natural flavorings are pure chemicals, and it really pisses me off. And we tell you the most popular food items you're buying on a daily basis that have them and how to avoid them. Breaking news. Terran Safai. $10 super chat. Much love from Mississippi. Wow. Buddy, quick question. Yes. When is the soul food coming, brother? Oh, dude. Soul food. Well, this is Mexican soul food, but um, I feel like we did a soul food. Give me some time. We did something. We did. What did we do? We did like, uh, I think we did uh, braised kale, like collard greens with kale. Um, but yeah, I need to do more of that. Oh no, we did a, hello, we did shrimp and grits. We did shrimp and cauliflower grits, my man, that were the bomb. We did that, uh, actually just last month. Look up the live stream for shrimp and grits with cheese. It was so good and you couldn't even tell they were cauliflower grits. Scammer payback with a $9.99 <laughs> Scammer. super chat. You need to try some traditional Russian dishes. Also, shout out to my wife who got me on your channel. Oh. Oh, oh and Art, you have some messages on your Farmers Only account. I made. Oh, nice. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Scammer, you're the man, dude. You and your wife oh are the best. They're such supporters of the channel. Uh, but yeah, I need to make more soul food, healthy soul food. But check out my cauliflower uh, shrimp and grits. It's phenomenal. So look at this. Now my tortillas are done. I'm going to put them in my mini oven here on the keep warm setting. Shaheen says soak the saffron in warm milk or warm water to oh, really bloom them. Yeah, that's what I thought. Shaheen. Do I have to crush it up too, Shaheen? Like if they go like, like that? By the way, just by having this open, I wish we had smell o vision The smell of saffron is insane. Get your nose in there. Nairobi, Nairobi Gonzalez. Super chat. Thank you, do you wash the fish? Okay, once again, Art is gonna explain to you, Nairobi, why you never wash the fish or chicken or poultry of any kind. So you're probably thinking you need to wash the fish because of bacteria reasons, but water is not going to kill the bacteria. Thank you, it's not gonna wash all of it off either. The only thing that's gonna get rid of the bacteria is heat and cooking your food properly. You're just gonna run the risk of cross-contaminating other things, whether it be chicken, fish, turkey and the watching sink. that water's going to splash all right. over the place splash, it's going to drip splash, onto splash. something and then you're going to have bad news especially if it's something that doesn't get cooked so don't do that yeah god forbid you have a pregnant mommy around the house or a little baby don't do that listen if there's any surface bacteria or salmonella that are bad they're going to get killed in the hot oil or a hot oven or a hot pan do not worry about it ian murphy's watching from belfast and just started keto hopes you can do more on them typically we're keto around here folks don't worry we do keto 99.9% .9 of the time Hey, new follower in Belfast, you can order the Keto Meal Prepping Cookbook. Go on Amazon, search Flav City, 125 low-carb recipes in here. You guys all know the shtick, but I got to do it. Every single recipe in here has a photo. Look at that, pork chops with the gravy and the bacon green beans. Every single recipe has detailed macros, has photos, has information on prep time, cook time, if there's a YouTube video for it. This is the ultimate cookbook for low carb because they're not sacrificing flavor. And what's cool about it is they're not just keto dishes. The, up here is a dietary information. This recipe for crispy chicken thighs is also paleo whole 30. It's egg free, dairy free and a meal prep. I mean, look at this. It gives you the details you need to make every single recipe with detailed macros for each component. Amazon, anywhere in the world, you guys, you can eat that kind of food. This is the golden cauliflower rice with nuts. I'm making the golden cauliflower real rice, right? So, ships around the world, over 500 five-star ratings. Thank you so much. We're still waiting, knock on wood, for that order for the fall, for the holidays from Costco and Sam's Club and Walmart. Let's hope that happens soon, my we friends. We may need to have like a quick tips video sometime because there's a lot of questions, a lot of controversy about washing. Really? Uh, washing fish, washing chicken, how to defrost it. No, you don't want to defrost with hot water. Interesting. You want, you want cold running water. So if you're going to defrost it the day of, you're going to have to plan ahead. It's we should make a video about the top 10 myths of cooking yeah, debunked. Yeah, we might need to. Right? Especially for the holidays. A lot of conversation Yeah, there. you guys always give us the best ideas, by the way, for, for ideas. We don't know anything, right? We I think, don't, especially. Especially art, right? Sometimes I think, hey, this is going to be the best video. I'm going to make it. And then nobody watches it. But you guys give me the right ideas to make videos about coffee creamers. I have no idea. But yeah, I think especially around the holidays, we should do a... A tip for like the top 10 things you're doing wrong in the kitchen. Bobby, do you own a microwave? That's a question that's been here many, I, many times. So. Uh, yeah, I do own a microwave. It's in the laundry room, plugged in like in the wall, and we only use it to melt uh, butter. I don't cook in a microwave. I don't believe in uh, the health of the microwave, and we try to avoid it. But sometimes you got to melt stuff really quick. All right, the last ones came out. I don't even remember which one those were. <laughs> oh, there. Now, these guys and these guys. So, guys. That's it, right? I, I mean, this is so, it's so crispy. It's insane, guys. This is like, look at this. This is a... You're gonna have to put it next to your microphone. Oh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, <laughs> it's hot. Here, really quick, listen. Right. Can you hear that? It's, it's super crispy. In my hand, if I was blindfolded, I'd be like, oh, it's a chicken McNugget. It's that crispy, it's crazy. So look, also, the oil art did not get that dirty. Yeah. So I can let it cool down. And maybe I will, Art. Maybe You're I will. You're doing that to spite me. Maybe I'll let it cool down and I'll strain it through some cheesecloth or a double mesh strainer yeah, and I'll sure save it. Maybe I will. Maybe you will. May Is it bad to actually pour oil like this in your garden and fertilize the mud? I've done that before. Yeah, you can do it. It's good for the dirt, right? That's what I thought. Because I've done that in the past and I'm like, is that bad? No. Okay. So, oh, look what happened, Art. I didn't push 
See, guys, perfect. I love that I screwed up. I didn't push the plastic wrap and it's getting brown there. Isn't that crazy? Look. Mm. It's still gonna taste brown, Oh yeah, I, I don't care. I, was, I actually, I did it on purpose, Art. I did it on purpose to teach a lesson to everyone to show that I'm not full of it. I'm gonna make a safety alert here. Bonnie Brewer, I only use my microwave to heat water. I would advise you do not do that. That's actually very Ooh, dangerous. Yeah. You can overheat the water and it can explode all over you. Don't do that. Trust yeah. me, Google it. You can explode especially when you touch this, right? If you're using like a glass Pyrex measuring cup, especially, you're setting yourself up for failure. Don't yeah, do it. that's really, really scary stuff. Okay, let's put the final touches on here. So Art, come back into position. And I'm gonna show you guys. These are the onions. If you weren't here in the beginning, I took onions and I marinated them in lime juice. I'll take some of the onions now and put it in there with just a shot of the lime juice. Cause the lime juice has been diluted with the flavor of the onions and it's not gonna be as harsh and acidic. And then I'll just mix it up. And if you need more acid, don't add lime, add the pickling liquid. That's the key, you guys. This, is, this looks so good. Getting guacamole to a restaurant is something I'll never do, except for uh, Rick Bayless in Chicago. He makes amazing guacamole. It's what, $10, $12 for one avocado guacamole? It's totally crazy. That's amazing. That is so so good, I love it. All right, so that is done. I'm just gonna get rid of that nasty color stuff on the top. Now I just have to dress my slaw. And then we are home free. How many people watching right now, Art? 774, 77. We didn't, we're not gonna break the record, but you know what? Are you having a good time, right? I mean, if you guys are having a good time, I wanna see that number of 270 go to 300 like that. Cause I'm having a great time with you. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing I have the video already ready for tomorrow. We're hanging out. People ask me if you wash the veggies, like the cabbage. They didn't see you wash it. Um, I was already halved and I washed it the other day. Yes, good question. So we'll add that. Plus with cabbage, it's such a tight head. If you cut it in half and you just throw away the outer leaves, do you have to wash the inside? Good question. Isn't that a good question? I feel like you still might have to because dirt can get in there, but Something to think about. Um, also something to think about is seasoning. Seasoning at every step of the cooking process. A little bit of salt, a little bit of peps. Cynthia says no. Huh, yes, right, Sheena. I'll make a video all about washing. Oh, it's gonna be exciting. That would be the old SNL skit, the anal retentive chef with Phil Hartman. Yeah. Anyone remember that? Sherry, I was just saying it can be dangerous to, to heat water to a boil in a microwave. Yeah. Google it. Yeah, bugs can get in there. I guess. I feel like you're probably safe. Yeah, speaking of bugs, the other day I was cutting up uh, a head of broccoli and there was a worm that fed, fell out of the head. It was crazy. And I actually applauded that bug and I saved his life because I'm like, dude, if you can stay alive from the time it was harvested to transport, to get to Whole Foods and have me come home, you deserve to live, right? I was like, back in Roman times, live or die live right so i took him outside i put him there and nicer, hope nicer than i would have been. and ho yeah art's like just throw it away i'm like no he deserves to live i'm not normally that kind of guy who's like i'm gonna save the bugs but i mean you gotta give some respect when it's lived that long through all that transport and everything right yes tiffany this is still live all 83, <laughs> 83 minutes and 15 seconds of it we don't stop and zahra says you need to try afghan food i would love to i would love to let me get my taco serving over here could have deep fried that worm. <laughs> <laughs> or put it at the bottle, bottom of a uh, tequila bottle, right? Marianne Brown says, Bobby, you old softy. <laughs> You're not a taco fan unless you have a taco holder, right? These are like- There's probably a real word for it. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, yeah. Tortilla real, or something like that, right? Um, but it's great for parties and for holding the uh, tortillas up. Hey, move the rice out of the way so I can yes, get, sir. In good get in there. Yes, sir. Get in there, Thank you. So let's build a couple tacos and see how they look. So here's what I wanna do, you guys. I wanna get, I'm gonna build two so Art can try one too. And then obviously we're gonna make more later on. It's staying warm in my tortillario. I put a couple down like this and I build my tacos a little differently than most. I like to put a little bit of slaw on the bottom. It adds some texture. And if you have ground beef tacos, it prevents the uh, fat from sogging the bottom, right? So we do that. Then I'll go 
directly in my oven here. Oh, where'd my fish go? Oh, no, I'm not in keto. I only eat keto when I'm here. Okay. Well, this is not keto, so. Right. Oh, well, this other than today. Perfectly. <laughs> right, we'll do that. And we'll do, this is one of the soggier ones. I don't want that. Bring it a little closer to the camera. Push it real good, thank you. Push it real good. And I'm gonna put the rest back in the oven to stay warm. Okay, and then, oh, you know what? We also, you know what I like to do sometimes? I like to do store-bought hacks. And one of my favorite store-bought salsas is from Rick Bayless, Frontera. So what I like to do, I mean, ideally it wouldn't be cold, but sometimes just to get a little more flavor in my guacamole or something, I'll make a, a semi-homemade guaca salsa and it adds a nice flavor there, right? And then I just take the guac and I put it on top like that. I'm all about semi-homemade hacks when you can do it. And this is a fantastic tortilla or a salsa. And then these are my favorite, you guys know it. They're called the red finger peppers. They always have them at the uh, Latin American, the Mexican market or Whole Foods. And I just like to chop it up there. And it's not super spicy, it's more fruity and it adds a nice color pop on top, right? So then I'll just garnish on top with that. Some people want some cheese on this. Um, no, I do no cheese on this because I feel like it might get in the way of that lovely fish flavor. But hey, if you were gonna do a cheese, I would do like a queso fresco or a queso añejo. Then let's plate up our guac in my lovely bowl I got from Telum, Mexico. Right, we'll put that in there. Not quite as much as I had hoped, but that's fine. So put that there. Then we need to put our rice somewhere. I need a festive bowl for my rice. Do I have a festive bowl? Oh, I have these plates. Look at this. How beautiful. These are um, homemade plates from Telum. We got them when we were there two years ago. They're gorgeous. So I'm gonna serve with that. I'll put some rice. Look at this rice, you guys. I mean, oh, so gorgeous. So a little bit of rice goes right here. A little bit more slaw next to it in case you want some crunch, right? Then our tacos are right here. And you guys, can I get some love? Can I get some hearts for the crispiest, gluten-free, not keto, but gluten-free fish tempura tacos with a smoky chipotle slaw. And we're oh, the natives are getting restless. And uh, guacamole, golden coconut rice, and homemade guacamole. This was a lot, you guys. We did a lot today, right? But it's Friday, right? That's what you gotta do. You gotta go big, or you gotta go home. home. Exactly. We're at home. Okay, let's try this really quick. I'm gonna take one bite. And this is where silence on the set. I want you to hear how crispy this is. Ready? Let me get really close to my thing here. Wow. Fantastic. It tastes clean. It's not greasy. The fish is nice and juicy. It's crunchy. It's everything you want, right? You pair it with that rice. I mean, I don't know any restaurants in Chicago that quite have this pairing here, but this rice, and the raisins, insane, and the membrane. You know what I would actually do? I would take a little more of the salsa. Ideally not be cold from the fridge. I would pour it over the top like that. It's gonna add that nice, a little wetness, right? And then, I, now I have to do another bite. Just for like, see, look at that. That's what you need. You need the salsa running down the side. Mm-hmm. Better. Oh my God. How do you properly eat a taco? Do you tilt your head or the taco? Head. You're supposed to tilt your head. Mm, mm, mm. So good. All we need is a cerveza, or if you're an Aldi, a Monterey something. <laughs> what was it? Oh my God. Corona knockoff. 
Art, you gotta try this. This is insanity. Yeah, let Art try the tacos. Hello. Roshan knows what's going on. Hello. Oh my gosh, you guys. Fe <laughs> phenomenal. Totally phenomenal. Let's go for the kill here. You put some uh, salsa on this one? Uh, I did not. Oh, thank you, Nairobi. Let's do it. Buen provecho. We're almost done, babe. Bring Rose up so she can say goodbye to everyone. It's sizzling here in California, says Zahar. All right, Cheers, I want to see if that's a perfect biter. Hold on. Ooh, lordy. See the head tilt? That's about a 40 degree angle there. Oh, that's 106 degrees, dang. All right. Now, Art is a man of many words, so you know he'll have a very graphic description mm. for you guys, rivaling only a chopped judge. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's got some nice crunch and just nice marrying of flavors there. Right. Oh, you guys. Mm. Texture is more anything. I right. Mean, it's, it's, it's everything. It's a, it's a texture party, right? It's a texture party. Would you say it's a party in your mouth? Everyone's so invited. Oh, uh, Rose is hungry? Okay. <laughs> it's a shame Rose can't eat this yet, but... <laughs> Oops. Babe, you're going to love these tacos. Okay. Everyone say hello once again to Rose and the love of my life number two, Desi. Desi, you should be very excited because we made these crispy fish tacos here. Look at that. Rose, it, look at that rice. Rose. Have you ever seen a rice, Rose, more beautiful than that? Rose? That's golden rice. Yeah, she loving it. Daddy made Ooh, golden that... rice with turmeric. Man, it's so yellow. It's like... Right? Rose, one of the rules is you eat with your eyes first and you have beautiful... Blue eyes, show everyone, Rose. Show everyone, oh, show them those big blue eyes, right? So why not tantalize those beautiful eyes with some beautiful rice? Oh, she's yawning like, ah, I've seen it before, Dad. It's not that big of a deal. So that's what's for dinner. So we also have, babe, look at these beautiful tempura crusted shrimp, wow. gluten-free, right? We got the golden uh, cauliflower rice. We Let's got the eat. guacamole. We Let's got the uh, smoky, like uh, antique taco style um, slaw there. Rose, I know you can't have it yet, and you get the secondary effect from mommy's breast milk. But come another, like, I don't know, six months, I'm gonna make you one of these tacos, less spicy. You know, yeah, yeah, not six mild, months. Mild picante, right? Wait and, about a year. And you're gonna love it. Uh, so that's it, you guys. I gotta feed the rest of the family. Uh, two videos coming at you this weekend. Tomorrow is Back to School, part two. Sunday is Natural Flavorings, El Diablo, right? We're going to tell you why to avoid those. But we had a great time, right? So thank you for hanging out with us. Everyone got to see Rose not once, but twice. Uh, we will see you very, very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace. 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 Later, guys. Super fun time. Right, Rose? Well, you're drooling with mommy. You're so excited. I'm, like, I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 <laughs>